Welcome back guys to Bastion, uh, and last time we finished building all our structures on this side. We got three cores, and we are going to head out on our next journey. So just as a little aside, I don't think I really explained what these um, areas are. These are kind of like, uh, like mini games almost, and they get you money and stuff like that and different prizes for completing them. But the thing about these proving grounds is that you don't really want to do them until your weapon is fully upgraded because they're not going to, it's basically impossible to win them unless your weapon is fully upgraded. So we're not going to do these proving grounds quite yet. We might just knock them all out in one episode or something like that. Um, but yeah, for right now, we don't have the money or the upgrade material for to even upgrade our weapons and do those. So we're just going to ignore them for now and do sort of the main areas. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Oh, this area sucks. I forgot about this place. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. Oh, shit. The fuck took the core? The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. Like how I, I act like I don't know, but I do remember this level. So, the thing that sucks about so this level, the reason I said, the reason I said why this level sucks is, uh, as you can see, the, wherever I walk, the floor, like, soon after falls out from uh, underneath. Holy shit, there's a lot of enemies, okay. Um, so yeah, I just kind of have to keep moving constantly when I'm on these tiles. Valuables are lying everywhere. Security is all fired up. Ah, I need to go back. You see, this was uh, this is why this level sucks. I hate it. Hate it. I right, so just want to go over here to see if there was anything over here. Okay, there's just money. About this so there, these like this green walkway is safe to walk on. Ah. Hate it. Alright. See the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Not so much for noise and Tom Fool. Ooh, that was a chunky crit. Sky bridges link the path together. Alright. So now we have these sky bridge things, which kind of like throw us. Just whips the kid along. Just like chuck us into a different area. Finds a spyglass. Like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an easy proposition. Oh god, not the flamethrower guys. Okay. Alright. The calamity changed everything. Even where the wind blows. So I don't think I've really said this yet, or I don't know if the game has said this, but when they refer to the Calamity, they're referring to, like, whatever caused the world to end. It's, like, the basically the end of the world. That's what they're talking about when they refer to the Calamity. So. Yeah. I just really want to be staying at full health here so we get our Dread Drum Grocks. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is... Who's at the core? Who else could have taken the core? Alright, it's just a little stupid spawner. God damn it. Alright, so we're just gonna mine this guy down. 
my god, he's too fat to proc the mine. There we go. Scumbag ate it by mistake. God damn it. Alright, just there we go. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. So it's come back ate it and I guess digested it and now we don't get the core. Feels fucking bad. No, they used to ship live munitions down the path. So now we get a hand grenade ability, which is okay. It's kinda hard to use, it's kinda hard to aim like properly, but these wires to toss those things plenty far away. Those are some chonky crits, 180 damage. Even gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. Turn, just line them up. Line them up, baby. Alright. So that's that. In all this toil, the kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? So yeah. That is level four. So we didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. So no core means we don't get to upgrade the bastion at all. We could always womp see womp. the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we built. Well, um, right now, for now, we're just going to stick with only upgrading the weapons that we're using because those upgrades cost money and we don't have a lot of money in early game right now. So we're just going to not upgrade, be very kind of, I, I can't even think of the but we're not going to upgrade right now. Once we get money in the late game, like we'll be swimming in money, so we'll just fucking throw upgrades around like crazy. The dead welcome him with open arms. So this is the big sad level. <laughs> the calamity took everybody after all. This is this is Bastion in its feels level. The kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. <laughs> you don't much care to see him. Not like this. Hmm. There's someone down over here? Nope. I miss anything? No. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Hmm. Someone who ain't like Mr. Bankley and his kindly wife. Hello. And he's blinking, so he's alive. Kid sees him there agape in the flesh. Bro, like just imagine, like imagine like adventuring. It's a or two trying to get to him. Ah, he ain't about to shit. stop, no matter what. Like imagine like just adventuring and like everybody's dead, and you're just going like city to city, just everybody's dead, and then just like. Doing your routine, doing whatever. And he's got so many questions after all. And you just see some alive there, like, goddamn. Just as a kid. Answers. That's the craziest part about this game too. Is like the main character is just a kid. The Thunder doing Brothers all this shit. Didn't make it. Oh. Pissed off their ghost, apparently. Holy shit. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Sr. Grady Jr. They didn't make it. 
but him. He survived. Hey! Hey, you! Guess I can't hear me. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? So, this is kind of where, and and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is sort of... Well, I'll, I'll get into this later, actually. I won't spoil this too much. Oh my gosh, this is weird. They're like worshipping. The dead bodies are like worshipping the poor. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. Fucking love this game. So interesting. <clears throat> He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. Let's talk to Rux first. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. So this is kind of where, as what I wanted to say earlier, they, they kind of introduced a big theme that's going to be sort of prominent in the rest of the game, is the Ura. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. And... Far to the east. And yeah, so the Ura are... A different race from the Ceylondians. Um, we all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. And, um... Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. And we'll see kind of how they develop this theme and stuff and what they do with this, but, um... He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city. And he's lived here ever since. But yeah, so this is the. It's important to just note that that he's a different race from the kid and the um, Rux. Remember, that's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. All right, so we are actually gonna do. Be a kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. So the memorial, this is sort of like different missions I can do for money. A valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Uh, you, it kind of shows your progress in a lot of them. Um, I need to defeat a hardy foe with less bull in the clip. Deliver a single crushing blow to a foe for the 70 damage. Um, so it's just all this different stuff we can do for money. It's a really good way in late game to like get money and stuff like that. Um, Words and, can't yeah. express what happened, but they're all I got. Um, so yeah, on to the next level. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Again, we have uh, two options. Let's do Pit. This is actually a really cool level. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Pith Orchard. The place is a dead end in more ways than one. So... Well, the gods are long gone now. And the Orchard core. It's long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. 
Pith stood for something once. Alright, that's the something right way to real. go. Let's go the wrong way first. Down here. There we go. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. And we never even learned. <laughs> we never even learned the main character's name. We just referred to as the kid the whole game. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Oh! Ah! That Piff lights up like a rodeo. So it's kind of a so. This is the smartest way to deal deal with Pith if you don't want to um. Or, like, easy punching through his rules. Really, you can just like. The bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. You can really just tank his damage and just damage him through it, but um, you end up losing a lot of health that way. So. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods or tell so, them off. This is like a really cool thing that's present in a lot of different Super Giant games. Games. Um, this is like a system where you basically make the game harder for yourself. Um, but as a reward, you get more XP and more money and stuff like that. And this is kind of present in, in all their games. Um, some sort of system like this. Um, so in this, foes will grow quicker to move and strike. They'll be faster. They'll fa move faster stuff like that uh, but we get 10% XP and 10% money another really great way to oh not what we meant to do well if the gods are alive they must be there's a lot of fucking sports ah <laughs> I was like swarmed by them um but yeah it's a it's another really good way to earn money late game um XP do, because XP is also really. We've only leveled once so far, and like in like five levels, we've only leveled up once. So this is another really good way to um, earn XP faster. That quick. Maybe old Pith put a scare in him. Yeah, the fucking squirts move so fast now. They're fucking zooming. Oh my gosh, they're so fast! Oh my gosh. Counter, baby! So where do I go now is the question. Are you gonna come alive? Yes, you sure are. Oh, he's so tanky too. All right, we're just gonna have to hold down left trigger. Oh wow, actual Reiner gameplay. That was great. Kid passes pits. Where's Sombra? At? And he's richer for it. Flamethrower guys, you kind of deal with them the same way that you deal with the bull, where you just kind of have to hold down left trigger. He found a core, but least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Um, you hold down left trigger until um they stop shooting at you. Sorry. Um, so the cool thing about that level is it sort of again. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. It it kind of further develops this theme that I was talking about earlier about this, these strife between these two races. Um, so let's talk to... Let's talk to Rex the Ura about feared the, the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. Yeah, so, like, for example... Zolf doesn't touch the thing. 
says the god of commotion is no children's toy. Right. So this is kind of an example of, of like how Saint Londians like almost like appropriated like their culture and stuff like that. So it's like the Ura had all these gods, right? Um, and the Ceylonians sort of took the gods and kind of made them into toys and stuff like that and kind of mocked them, basically. Um, just like one of the many examples that we'll see of sort of the strife between these two races, and um, it's interesting. Uh, again, we, we nothing. we're not going to upgrade. Um, we did level up, so let's go get a new perk. Um, I don't really feel like I mean, we could go with like oh, let's just get fetching fizz or fetching whatever fizz is like a mouthful of nails but the benefits are worth it so, all right let's go get one more core before the end of this episode um let's do cinder brick fort all right There's only one way to Cinder Brick Fort. The hard way. Love that shit. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. XP, baby, give me that shit. Alright. Um, so in this level, we're kind of introduced to the marshals, which are um, basically like the police force of Ceylandia. We kind of get some backstory about them a little bit. Some cool world building in this level. They've been left to freeze or stop. Oh, so these, these yellow turrets, they kid. shoot homing shots at me. And even if I deflect those shots, they'll still home back at me. So, really no point trying to deflect them. You just want to dodge them. Ah. Wham. Kids ready for the win bags this time. Wham. All right, let's heal up. Oh, I respawn. That's weird. All right. Well, windbags, young and old, keep fighting for the fort. Damn, they're kicking my ass there. At least the marshals left the kid. I love this weapon. We get the musket. Something just the bags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their easy hides. It's just a uh, really good uh, sort of crowd controlling. Like you can just take out a ton of enemies at once like that. It's awesome. Wind bags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want is a warm place to stay and a decent meal. The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. Ooh, that's a lot of money. So, um... Yeah, so the reason I, I don't think I really talked about this in the first episode, but the reason I really wanted to play this game um, as my kind of my first playthrough is because I thought it'd be really like, a very chill sort of game. Um, I wouldn't have to commentate too much because of the narration and stuff. I feel like it'd be a very easy game to play, and, and I think it's also just a very interesting story and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, that's why I kind of chose it. I hope I hope, hope y'all enjoy it because I sure fucking can. enjoy playing it. I enjoy uh, the story. 
So what we're gonna do here actually is we're gonna do use scrap musket as a melee basically and you we're gonna use scrap musket and fang repeater. Use fang repeater for range and then just use scrap musket for like um crowd controlling like as for the windbags. Large amounts Cinder of enemies. Brick gave him enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well the fort ain't there. It's poor. Much, right? Can't blame them for one though. Ow, holy shit. Alright, yeah, we're just gonna throw a mine right there. Stay away. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Alright. One thing about the musket, though, clean off a ledge. <laughs> um, one bad thing with the musket early game, I'm trying to use it as a me like a melee alternative right now, and it's I, I come now realizing it's not really optimal, just because it doesn't really do a lot of single target damage right now. Neither does my hammer does a lot of single target damage, but uh, my musket does not, and neither does my uh, fang repeater. So it's kind of problematic right now, but we'll be fine. Episode might run a little long. Oops. Ah. Crash the timing, holy shit. Times like this, kids glad he packed trip lines. Kids blasting everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Oh, it is good at getting rid of uh, jagweeds, though. Whatever the fuck they're called. Secured is playing gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. Ah! Flamethrower turrets suck wiener. We're just gonna we're just gonna stay away from them. Might be boring. But ain't afraid to get burned. There's a uh, the best way to deal with them. Alright, we got them. God, I love this song, bro. They trapped the kid in the middle of the fort parade ground. Oh shit. I'm trapped. Oh, hello. Chunk is bring out Glutus and Clanton and all his scumbag bungles. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of these motherfuckers. Okay, we're just gonna put a trim on. Do a lot of damage. It takes down Glutus. Maybe it was Glandon. Oh my gosh, we're so tanky. And I have no tonics left. Oh wait, there's a tonic. Alright, watch this. We're gonna have them group all up. The other big yeah. joins his brother. Alright, let's destroy the rest of these turrets. Let's destroy the spawner. And. This is about the end of this level. Kid used to dream of getting a Marshal's badge, but not like this. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Huh? Huh? 
Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Nice. Well, we might do that next episode, actually, that smoking pipe. Well, I'll show you kind of what that's all about. Um, the marshal the seemed bad. a good man, he says. They treated him with dignity. And let's see what Rux has to say about the Marshal Bad. surrendered to us. The marshals kept a wary eye on him. So that's that's a, like again, this game slowly kind of developing this theme, right? And it's really interesting and, and kind of funny that um, you know Zolf was like, oh, you know, the, the marshals always treated us with respect. They were really nice to us. And then Rux was like, yeah, no, the the marshals did not trust Ura at all. They always kept their eyes on them. It's kind of like this interesting perspective thing. But um. But yeah, I kind of went long on this today's episode, so I apologize for that. Um, if you guys liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. And thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode, episode 3, baby. Uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye!